Hi friends, Krista here. Thanks for stopping by Books and Jams. Today I'm going to be continuing on with my series of book haul revisits where I go back two years ago to when I first started my booktube channel and take a look at some of my hauls and see how I've done with the books that I got during that haul. In this video I'm going to be looking back at November 2016 and I went to a library book sale and these are the books that I purchased during that sale and we're going to see if I've read them or if I didn't read them and if I've gotten rid of them and we'll see how I'm doing. Some of these videos I've done really well and have read a lot of the books or gotten rid of them and some of them like I think October's was really bad and I hadn't read hardly any of them. So let's see how I did in November for this library book sale haul and hopefully I'm not too embarrassed. <laughs> we shall see. So I'm gonna put in my little headphones. I have the video here to watch and let's just get to it. Hello world, Krista here with Books and Jams and yesterday and the day before I went to a library book sale and I got all of these lovely books for under $25. A good deal. Ah! All right, good. so the first ones I'm gonna kind of show you all as a set. There was a whole box of these Agatha Christie books, so I chose to just purchase a rainbow. I was so excited when I found these Agatha Christie books. They are so gorgeous. I wish, looking back now, that I had purchased all of them. They were only $2 a piece. I did get these six at the time, and I've since purchased about five or six more to kind of continue filling in the colors of the rainbow. They're beautiful. I did read Hercule Poirot's, I still can't say it, Hercule Poirot's Christmas and really enjoyed it. And Agatha Christie is a mystery writer that I can't believe I haven't read more from, but I do have here the other five from this haul that I haven't yet read. Evil Under the Sun, 450 from Paddington, The Murder of Roger Ackroyd, The ABC Murders, and The Tuesday Club Murders. These three are Hercule Poirot books, 450 from Paddington and the Tuesday Club are part of her Miss Marple series, which I don't think I've read any of. So I have a little mixture there. One of these days, maybe 2019 will be the year that I actually go through and read all of the Agatha Christie's that I have. I don't know. Before I continue, I wanted to show you. So I'll include those as six. So I did read the Hercule Poirot Christmas and then I have five that are still unread from those Agatha Christie books. So I'm not thrilled about the movie version cover, but I enjoyed the movie Shutter Island. I am not a thriller horror person. I don't think this is horror. I would put it in thriller. I don't really remember what the twist is, but when I saw Shutter Island, I knew that I was interested in reading the book. I did read Shutter Island and I unhauled this edition of it. So I will include that in unhauled as read. I wish that I had read the book before watching the movie because even though there was a long period of time in between and even though I'm very forgetful, I think because I had read, because I had seen the movie first, I didn't like the book quite as much as I might have otherwise. I purchased Frederick Bachman's My Grandmother Asked Me to Tell You She's Sorry. And I have not read any Frederick Bachman, but he's all over booktube and I'm very curious and interested to read this one. I did read this one and I love it. <laughs> so there's another for the red side of things. Since this video I have read A Man Called Uva, My Grandmother Asked Me to Tell You She's Sorry, and Bear Town by Frederick Brockman and he is currently one of my favorite authors. I absolutely loved all three of those. My grandmother asked me to tell you she's sorry is a little bit different than the others. There is this fairy tale aspect of the book. The grandmother has told this fairy tale to her granddaughter over and over and over and so we hear bits and pieces of this story. It took me probably about half of the book until I was really invested in the story because this fairy tale aspect was so confusing and it was just so different from the other two that I had read. However, I think Frederick Brockman writes characters brilliantly. They're so quirky and fun and yet deep. It's beautiful, it tugs on my heartstrings. We will move right along. <laughs> This is The Angels Game by Carlos Ruiz Cefon. So I have your Angels Game. I have not read it. I did just reread Shadow of the Wind uh, last month and I think that this will be a good one to kind of read much closer to, to the reading of that one. This book also takes place in Barcelona and is connected to Shadow of the Wind. I don't think it's a direct sequel to Shadow of the Wind. However, we also see the Cemetery of Forgotten Books within this story and this one is about a struggling author who lives in this dilapidated old mansion in Barcelona and discovers that there's some connection to his mansion and the Cemetery of, of Forgotten Books. His publisher has some secrets, so it feels like it'll have that same kind of dark gothic-y vibe that Shadow of the Wind has and have some connection to that story. So 
I definitely am interested in, in reading further. I love Carlos Ruiz Stefan's writing and I'm, I think that this will be a really good one to read but as of yet it is unread so I have marked it as unread. Moving on. This is Fingersmith by Sarah Waters and I forget what else she's written but I've heard of her a couple times from a number of different people. So this is a suspense thriller about two orphans. I heard a lot about Fingersmith when I first started booktube or Sarah Waters I should say and especially by a lot of British booktubers. I uh, unfortunately unhauled this and I hadn't read it yet but I just decided it was one that I didn't feel like I would care to read so it's gone from my shelves. I picked up Cemetery Girl by David Bell and this tagline says every truth has its price. Cemetery Girl is another one that didn't make the cut. It has been unhauled from my shelves and it was unread. Over the course of the last couple years have called my shelves quite a bit and removed ones that didn't feel like they were interesting to me any longer. And Cemetery Girl didn't make the cut either. Sarah Dessen, again I haven't read anything by Sarah Dessen, but this one is a really thin one called Keeping the Moon and that's one that I don't have yet. If you've watched any of these videos you know Sarah Dessen is an author that I was collecting but haven't yet read so there's another one. So we're we're doing pretty poorly here. <laughs> Two read, seven unread, and three unhauled. So not awful, not great. I did read this one um, on audiobook uh, two months ago, I believe, in Ember in the Ashes by Sabah Tahir. So when I found it for only, guys, can you believe it? 50 cents, 50 cents. Yes, I did read this one. I loved An Ember in the Ashes, but it's one that I would like to reread, especially because I want to listen to Reaper at the Gates, which is the third in the trilogy. I listened to both of the first two on audio. Um, and I don't own the second one yet and I actually probably will eventually unhaul this copy of this one because they've had a cover change since the third book. So someday when I find them all at thrift stores or secondhand at library sales, which is probably where I'll purchase them, I'll get the updated cover hopefully. But who knows, we'll see. But I did read that one. So I'm counting it even though I read it before this video happened. <laughs> If you know me, you know that I love World War II historical fiction. So when I saw this book called War Brides by Helen Bryan, I knew that I had to pick it up. And it sounds similar to The Nightingale. So here we have War Brides, which is a World War II historical fiction. And you'd think it's something that I would read right away, but I didn't. Partly because it's a chunker. It's quite big. But otherwise, I don't know why I haven't picked this one up. This is about, again, women during World War II. And I think there's dual timelines so we get the wartime story but we also meet these women 50 years later when they come together to confront a traitor and I don't know who that traitor was or why they're confronting him or what happened but that's something that sounds very interesting to me so I feel like I would love this book and it's by Helen Bryan. So there's another one that is unread. The numbers are getting worse. <laughs> Last month I finished Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children and I wasn't sure I was going to continue with the series. When I saw Hollow City for such a cheap price, I had to pick it up. So this is by Ransom Riggs and it's the second book in that trilogy. I did unhaul Hollow City and I had not read it because I decided after reading Miss Peregrine's that I was not interested in the rest of the series. I didn't decide that right away though. I think I purchased Hollow City soon after reading Miss Peregrine's. So I hadn't yet decided that I wasn't going to continue, but yeah, I've unhauled both of them, but Hollow City I did not read. This is called The Heiress of Winterwood by Sarah Ladd. Um, it is the first in a trilogy. It just looks like the kind of book that I like, set in the English yep. countryside. I have this book out actually this winter. I pulled out from my shelves a pile of five or six books that have the word winter or snow in them and put it in another room. Uh, to pick up maybe this winter, hopefully. I, maybe I'll do a video where I show you those books. But this is one that I've pulled from the pile. I like that it's the first in a series. I like that it's Christian fiction and sometimes I get in the mood for that. This book is about this woman named Amelia who, grow, who is an heiress on an estate in England in the early 1800s. She promises her dying friend that she will help raise her baby. Um, her friend actually dies and then she and the father are attempting to raise this baby but then somehow the baby vanishes and so this is the story of what happens. It sounds really good, uh, kind of a historical British setting. I am sure that I'm gonna love it but yeah I just haven't read it quite yet. Yikes! I picked up a book called How to Be Lost by Amanda Eyre Ward. Here's another one that I have unhauled without reading. <laughs> So I'm actually okay with that. I, having so many books on my shelves, I'm okay if I sometimes get rid of ones that I just don't think are for me anymore. 
And so that is another unhauled, unread book. So this is Devil in the White City by Eric Larson, and I saw this from Kate at Life Between Words, and I believe it's about a serial killer that happens during the 1893 World's Fair. This is another one that is unhauled and unread. I unhauled it quite a while ago. Nonfiction and I don't always get along, and after listening to a couple different people review it or talk about their feelings, I just decided that it wasn't for me. So I got rid of it. Finally, I picked up a young adult historical fiction by Anne Rinaldi called The Secret of Sarah Revere. I've read two other Anne Rinaldi historical fiction, and I really like the way that she tells a story. This is another unread, but I still own it. These are little mass market paperbacks, YA Historical Fiction by Anne Rinaldi, and I've read two of hers, and I really, really enjoy them. I like that they're quick. They also deal with aspects of history that aren't maybe the most popular or the most talked about or the most written about aspects of history so I do enjoy that. This one obviously uh, happens around the time of Paul Revere and Paul Revere had some kind of secret and Sarah Revere finds it out. So this is one that I will definitely read at some point. I um, just haven't read it yet. I think that's it. Let me see. So there you have it. Look at that pile and you can't see the bottom. Let me see if I can angle it down. There it is. The whole pile. Yay! All for less than $25. Okay, so that is it. So it's not awful. <laughs> of these, I've read three of them and unread 10. Six that I unhauled, only one of them I had read before unhauling it, and five I just got rid of because I no longer was interested in them. I'm not horribly disappointed with these stats. I'm excited about the books that I did keep on my shelves. In particular, I am thrilled with these gorgeous Agatha Christie's as well as the others in this series that I have on my shelves. So I am... I'm gonna read these at some point. I just, I just don't have enough time. So that is it for another book haul revisit. I hope that you enjoy these videos. I love making them and looking back at these old videos and seeing how well I've done or how poorly I've done. <laughs> Uh, whatever the case may be. As always, I would love to chat with you down in the comments below about these books that I haven't read or didn't read or unhauled or anything that stood out to you during this video. And be sure to give this a big thumbs up if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will definitely be chatting with you in another video very soon. Bye. Book sale, I didn't quite, blah, 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 too many words asks you to tell you she's sorry. Blah, I can't say that. I keep saying there you have it. <laughs> There you don't have it, there I have it. <laughs> I am... <sighs>